Um, good day, everyone. Um, my name is Guan Lan Liu, and today I would like to uh, talk about my PhD project, which is assessing and reducing congestion in seaport. Um, today's pro uh, during today's presentation, I would like to talk about the background and the aim and scope, as well as the methodology for my study, the case studies and the conclusion I've got, as well as the future work. So, I want to first do a little bit background talk. Um, so about maritime transport, it's a means of transport where goods or people are transported via sea routes. Maritime transport alone represents more than 80% of more, all merchandise trading worldwide. In 2019, the global commercial shipping fleet grew by 4.1%, representing the highest growth rate since 2014. And at the beginning of 2020, the total world fleet amounted to 98,000-ish commercial ships of 100 gross tons and above, equivalent to a capacity of 2.06 billion debt weight tonnage. And then leads, leads to my research question, why study port congestion? In recent years, the number of vessels has been increasing steadily, resulting in port congestion. And port congestion is commonly used to describe the situation where vessels are spending longer time to get load or offload. In other words, an unwanted delay. Port congestion can lead to frequent maritime accidents in coastal areas, negative impacts on economy, as well as higher shipping emission. So in a position paper produced by National Customs Brokers and Forwarders Association of America in 2015, Investigation find out that at least seven out of 10 America's busiest ports are facing congestion regularly, which means vessels have to wait in port for days to unload, trucks have to wait in line for hours to pick up one single container, and customers' shipment delays lasting weeks. Studies show that congestion has not only caused a negative impact on economy, but also influenced the environment. According to ITF calculations, shipping emissions in ports are substantial. Around 85% of these emissions come from container ships and tankers due to their dominant presence in terms of port costs. So to improve the port efficiency and bring benefit to port economy and environment, it is important to identify those unwanted delays which caused by the bottlenecks in port. Once again, I want to stress the aim of this study is to identify and solve the bottleneck in port, which will cause unwanted delay, therefore to reduce the negative impacts. By using all this data here as input for the port for the models, which are port QE model, birth characterized model, and the waterway congestion level model, the output of this study will provide advice for port, ship operator, and public in different ship type as well for short, medium, and long terms. So since this project studies port, here I'm using layout of port of time as example to show you some key features of a port. Naturally, a seaport will have waterways to allow ships to get into in from sea. And we can see here, there is a seawater break a port also need berths to serve the ships, which are dry berths and wet berths. We also need facilities, say cranes or forklift along the berth to load and unload the cargoes from the ship. And if we look further back, we can see the storage area where customers store their goods. And there is also hinterland, uh, which is the area that the port serves both for imports and exports. Right, so now let's look at some of my models. So first model is the QE models. QE models have been used in many researches to solve the congestion problem. This figure here shows a multi-server QE model using ship interval, inter-arrival time, birth service time, and the no number of births as input. This model can calculate the maximum number of ship that is waiting for a birth as well as the mean waiting time. This model can also provide the optimal number of births if extra births are needed to reduce the delay. However, 
Using time as unit to measure congestion is biased. She might just wait in port for a long time because of a bad weather. In order to filter the force major force major situations out, I propose a waterway congestion model and a birth characterization model to solve the problem. On the waterway side, ship domain theory has been used and altered to calculate the measurement for port waterway congestion level. Just like the road traffic, waterway traffic also have traffic speed and volume. Therefore, this study proposed the three range here to indicate when the waterway is severe congested, mild congested, or relatively freely flowing. While on the birth side, I see port has offering a birth length for accommodating vessel length for a period of time. In those terms, the port is theoretically at full capacity if the sum of the entire birth length offered is occupied for 100% of the time. Although birth utilization rate can be defined in a variety of ways, here in this study, which is concerned with physically accommodating vessels for a period of time and understanding the congestion caused by vessel operating in port, the value length times time of birth occupancy is defined as the measure of birth utilization rate. Since the geographical extent of each birth is predefined, thus a number of usage scenarios relevant to this study could be observed depending on the length of the vessels using the birth. So the first scenario is when there's no vessel in the birth, it's called birth entirely vacant. And for the second scenario, when the sum of the vessel length is shorter than the offered birth length, as this blue arrow here indicates, the vacant space can still serve a smaller vessel, thus it's called birth partially vacant. And if the vacant part of the offered birth cannot be used to serve another vessel, it's called birth partially wasted. And for the last one, when the sum of the vessel's length is longer than the offered birth length, which indicates part of the vessel length is in the adjacent birth, it's called ship overhand. And first, let's look at the birth allocation process. So the perfect birth allocation process will be look like this animation, where the ships arrive at the birth one by one with perfectly matched birth length and leave the birth one by one as well. However, in reality, we know that the birth has a predefined length and the ship length won't always match the length of the birth. So here is the example of how port operator allocate the ships in practice. We can see that the operator moves some of the ship so they can fit in the birth together. And now I want to dis I want to show you one of the case study I've done for Tianjin port. Uh, I will only show you part of the result from my study. So if you're interested in more results, please feel free to check the paper online. Um, here it, I'm using the layout of the Tianjin port, which will be discussed later as a case study, as an example to show the research scope. The research boundary includes the waterway, dry and wet birth, and the facilities of a seaport. The data set I used for the, for the case study is just a full year of pilot and traffic data to perform the analysis of the vessel traffic movements of Tianjin port. The data set includes static information, for example, pilot number and action ship name, drought destination, and dynamic information, which are agent plan time, ship apply time, pilot embark and time and ship birthing time. So these figures here shows the average percentage of birth occupied, birth partially vacant, birth entirely vacant, and birth partially wasted in different terminals. The results show that dry book terminal is the most occupied and the container terminal is the least occupied throughout the year. The statics indicates that in 2012, Tianjin port has sufficient capacity to handle the demand. The study also find out that birth operators in Tianjin port tend to rearrange the birth vessels. So certain births can reach 100% utilization rate. Now, have, now let's have a look on the bulk terminal result. So Tianjin bulk terminal has 
38 breaths, 16 breaths handle general cargos, which are in circle here. Um, 16 breaths handle grain, coke, iron, and coal cargos, which are in rectangle uh, squares. And there are six breaths handle general and dry bulk cargos, which are in triangle. There are 66% breaths, which birth occupancy percentage is over 50%. And 18% for this, which birth occupancy percentage is over 70%. We can see that in 2012, dry bulk birth in Tianjin are busy, but still have the free capacity to handle more cargoes. Now let's have a look at the circled area here. The top figure here shows the layout of G1 to G26 birth and the the rest two figures shows the percentage of birth usage as well as ship overhead and number of vessel movement for birth, oh, sorry, for birth 20, G26 here. So G26 is the most occupied, has the highest occupy rate birth, and this birth also have the largest overhead. This is because it's neighbor G25. So actually here there's another birth called G25. It's not in use. So vessels in G26 have more space and therefore no need to move. In contrast, for G3 and G4 berths, it can be seen from the map that they are neighbors and are, and are all adjacent, while G3 is the third busiest berth handling general cargoes. Its overhand is, over, is also significant. This compresses the available length of G4 berth Nevertheless, the port operator moved the vessel in G3 several times to achieve the result. If you remember the animation I showed before. According to the Tianjin port website, G3 and G4 berths belong to the same company, which indicates that the berths can cooperate during the busy period. Therefore, to reduce overhand movement of vessel, the port operator can increase the use also for G10 and G11 berths because they belong to the same company which are the same type that handle general cargo as well. Less movement of vessel will not only reduce the ship emission, but also lower the possibilities of ship collision accidents in port. The, in this case study, I assess the existing berth allocation scheme in Tianjin port by analyzing the pilot station data set. The result also indicate that in practice, the port operator tends to put as many vessels as they can in some berths to reach a high utilization rate. The, the consequence of the operation scheme is to increase the number of vessel movements and in return, higher emissions and the probabilities of accident in port. Since there is alternative berths available to handle the vessels, the port can consider increase the usage of them. Um, now is the conclusion for my whole PhD study. This study proposed a preliminary study, as well as new congestion indicators and levels for dry and wet side to help identify and solve the bottlenecks in port. For QE model gives mean waiting time an optimal number of births, which can provide advice for port investment. Birth characterized model indicates the occupancy of birth, also reveals the operations pattern which can provide advice for port operator and to enhance operation. And finally, the waterway congestion level is a new way to define the crowdedness of the waterway. As for the future work, I intend to apply my model to more ports and one will be Port of Time. As you can see from the picture here, Port of Time is actually an, defined as an inland port. It has a relevant, relatively narrow waterway compared to the previous seaport you've seen. And some of its wet berths are in the middle of the waterway. If you can see here, the stick out bit. Even though they are not experiencing congestion right now, my model can show the maximum capa uh, cap capability of the port. In other words, predict when will the congestion happen if the port remained the same with increasing port call. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very all very much for your patience. And um, any questions? Thank you very much, Guanla. So uh, 
Does anybody have any questions? Not, I would like to ask a question. So, uh, Juan, what do you think uh, if the port would build a new development or a new port is going to be built? What are the crucial factors that they should consider to avoid congestions and, uh, in port and outside the port? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, in my personal view, right now, most of the ports are not really experiencing congestion. Because if you mention congestion right now, most people will say, oh, we, ha we, have congest we are congested because we've been waiting too long outside of the port. But there are so many factors that make you decide to wait. There are some factors you just like say you are willing to wait because your cargo is still on the way. Or uh, you don't really want to wait, but the port cannot serve you right now. So if so if it's the second scenario, when the port can't really serve you right now, then you can look into, you, you might want to look into details and see if it's A, you don't have enough berth or facilities to handle that many ports, uh, ships, then that leads to the, to the decision that, oh, you want to extend the port size or you want to build another port. But if, just as I showed before in my, in, my, in my result, the Tianjin port, for example, it does have enough space to serve everyone, but they are just, they can't, they, maybe it's their waterway size, maybe it's the management that have problem. So then you don't really have to build a new port. You can just do changes in other uh, things. So it can just reduce the congestion. If, have I answered your question? Oh. Yes, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you.